ebecatalog.com for your free information. Welcome back to the Let's Stay Together talk show. Now here is your host, Reverend Rick McCain and author Brendan McCain. All right, all right. Welcome back. Thank you for listening to Let's Stay Together Talk. I'm your host, Rick McCain, along with my baby, my girl, my boo. Once again, she's not fired anymore. Brenda McCain, and we've got Tracy Brown Howard, and our producer, one of the best producers ever in internet radio or in the world, Dion. Oh, Dion. So, uh, Dion's my man. He, 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 uh, he takes care of us. Yeah, he does. He takes care of us. We love you for that, Dion. So what we got to go to now, baby? Leave it in the car. Hey, Brenda, I heard you telling your sister you was going somewhere that you got out of the car. Where do you think you're going? You eavesdropping again? You need uh-huh. to watch your tone. I'm not your child. Ugh. Brenda, okay. I'm right in the car with you, but I need to know where you're going. Really, Rick? <laughs> I'm going to the store, but like I said, I'm not your child. I don't have to report to you, baby. Hey, nobody <laughs> said you're my child, so you can cut that stuff out. You are my wife, however, therefore, I need to know where you're going. You need to watch your words. You sound like a man that can be very abusive. You are way too controlling and insecure. Whoa, wait a minute. You don't have to go there. I just want to know where my wife is. Well, Rick, the way you've been talking, that's how domestic abuse starts. Oh! Hmm, girl. (laughs) Oh, man. You didn't have to go there. I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to be controlling, but I know sometimes it sounds that way. I just don't want you thinking of me that way. Okay, baby, I accept your apology, but be careful with your words and your tone, and let's just leave this in the car. Oh, thank you, baby. Uh, If we go out, if you go out, can you at least let me know where you're going? All right, all right. So that's uh, leaving in the car. So one of our questions we always ask for leaving in the car is if you believe that it was true or Memorex. Dion, true or Memorex? If it's true, raise up your hand. Dion said it's Memorex. Tracy, what you think? True or Memorex? I don't think that's true. Ted Rena, is that true or Memorex? <laughs> Memorex. Uh, so the answer is going to shock you all. That is absolutely Memorex. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. But what we decided to do was we wanted to tackle an issue of a relationship that has a controlling partner in there. We talk about a lot of things with leaving in the car, but we wanted to tackle a very, you know, a difficult and touchy issue about how sometimes men or people or spouses in a relationship can be very demanding, demeaning, and controlling and to the point of almost being physically abusive or abusive Mm. to the person that we're with. And so if that's something that's happening to you, we want to talk about that a little bit, about how you should deal with that situation. So we've got our guests in here, Making Marriage Work. They're still in here with us now, Ted and Renna, who's been married for 23 years. They're part of the Salem Baptist Church uh, ministry group. What do you say about something like that? I'm going to go with you first, Renna, about a controlling spouse that's always got to know where their that, that other spouse is at. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> when you find, for me, when you find someone that is totally controlling like that, there's something they're hiding. There's something wrong with them. Something else is going on, and it's not about you. I think you need to get to the bottom of that. Mm-hmm. And when somebody's in your life like that, you might need to step back and, and reevaluate this whole situation because <laughs> if they got to have that much control over where you going, where you with, who you with, did you stop by your mama's house, how long it take, something else is going on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sounds like a trust factor to me, Rick. Yeah. Sounds like uh, they don't trust uh, the individual that they're asking the questions to. Uh, maybe something happened in the past where they they found out that they were not trustworthy. But I can yeah. say this. If you uh, attack your wife that way, you're going to drive her away. Yeah, uh-huh. definitely. If you attack your spouse that way, you're going to drive him away. Yeah. No one wants to feel like they are in prison in the yeah. marriage. Yeah, that's right. true. Tracy, what you got to say, honey? Um, I, I'm I'm right there with that agreement that it's it's some issues going on, and um, it, it's it's a scary thing sometimes, you know. And sometimes not only does it show signs of distrust, 
but it pushes you mm-hmm. in yeah. the opposite direction. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so that's that's something that you have to be very um, careful of. If somebody's always accusing you, always thinking you're up to something, you know, it kind of makes you kind of say, well, they think it anyway. I might as well just go there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I agree with every last one of our guests, plus Tracy over here with that. The thing with that scenario that gets me is that you, every woman want to be loved by her spouse. And it's nice to know that, you know, your man threw out the day, hey, baby, what's going on? And you check in like that. Oh, yeah, that's but fine. Daily, where you at, like you said, Rena, how long it take you to get to your mama house? How long are you going to be there? Why are you timetabling me unless you are up to something? Mm, like you said, when they doing too. that is a twofold. Either he is insecure or she's insecure or he creeping trying to get his time schedule that's together mm. to make sure, you know, the <laughs> other side of it. Yeah, I so, yes. I mean, it's yeah, interesting, but as Ted said, it will push you away from that person. You don't need no one drilling in, where you at, way badgering you. Like you said, if you never thought about stepping out, that person will push you to somebody else. It's yeah. like, hey, you 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 serve me up to this person by telling me what I'm not doing with you. Mm-hmm. So what you have it. Yeah, you know, and I'm agree with uh, everything you guys said to say. I'm going to take it at a different angle. I'm going to take it to the uh, the person that's being abusive, who's being controlling, uh, that individual uh, needs some help, and if you're in that kind of situation mm-hmm. and you're listening and, and you're not accepting the fact that you are being very abusive uh, to the person that you claim that you love, then you need to consider possibly getting some help. If that person has told you, like Brenda said to me in, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, recording, that uh, you're starting to sound abusive, those are key words that you need to gravitate to to realize that that's something you don't want to be. And in this scenario, I said, I don't want you to think of me that way. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if she thinks of me that way or not. If that's who you are, that's then you, you need are. to realize that you are coming to a point where being very abusive and abuse is right around the corner. And so I want to say to that couple that is married and you know that your spouse is being abusive or their their tone is abusive or they're, they're controlling and they always want to know where you are. There are some insecurity issues there, but you don't want those insecurities to go to a point where it gets abusive. That's when you need someone like Ted and Renna said, a power couple that you can talk to. Mm-hmm. And if you need to, as Renna said, step away. I would rather for you to step away from that situation yep. than us coming to visit you at a funeral home because you decided that you were just going to keep on going into a situation where a person is being over-controlling to the point where now they're putting their hands on you. If you're in a situation like that, please get out, Mm -hmm. find some counseling, and then also see what you can do with prayer for the spouse that you're with. You know, Leslie, I want to say on that is that some people don't know they're like that until Mm -hmm. someone bring it out to them. They have to point it out Mm -hmm. because that person probably was raised in a house. Well, I've seen my father do it. My mother didn't ever complain about it. It was just a normalcy, and he's taking that into his marriage and stuff. You know, and I'm going to agree or disagree with that because I think people know that they're being controlling. They just sometimes try to escape the, the reality of it. I I know if I'm saying, you know, I mean, there's been times where I've said something to someone. I'm like, well, I didn't know it came off that way. But if you're you, you're in a pattern of doing something mm-hmm. like that, when you've seen it at your house mm-hmm. and then you bring it to your house, you know what it looks like. Mm-hmm. And you know that your mother didn't like it or you're mm-hmm. you, so you know that it's wrong. Right. And so I don't necessarily think that they don't know. I think they don't want to accept the fact the that behavior. they know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They don't want to accept that behavior. And you've got to, just like Alcohol Anonymous, you've got to first admit that you're an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. You, and, and until you do that, you can't go through the program because you're going to step out. And in a lot of cases, people make excuses for their behavior. And you should realize that's your behavior. I mean, I, be honest with you, when, when me and Brenda first got married, I was divorced. I felt very insecure when Brenda was, you know, beautiful young lady, beautiful, lady, still beautiful young lady. Mm-hmm. I felt yes, very yes, insecure. Yes, yes. What helped me <laughs> was Brenda saying to me, baby, I'm not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. So let's stop, you know, you know, talking in a negative tone. Right. It broke the veil for me. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I, I can understand a man feeling that way, insecure, but it should never get to the point where it's abusive and controlling. Mm-hmm. And so you've got to be careful about that man out there that I understand that you can be insecure about things because insecurity 
is something that we all deal with in some points of life. And if you go through a, a failed divorce like I did and I get married again, you do get scared. You do get insecure. But you've mm-hmm. got to trust not only God first, there but you've you got go. to have a trust in that wife that who she is wasn't what you left. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's long, called baggage. Yeah, right. You're right, baggage. As long Sweet as you keep on holding on to what you left, right. you're never going to be in a joy what you're with now. I know. That's, that's it. right. You know, so yeah, I had my knee pairs. I was praying. Yeah, so that's uh, <laughs> that was leaving in the car, dealing with abusive situations. And we're going to go to one of my favorite things uh, that uh, we have is uh, LST letters.